Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jacob Perret and welcome back to Something Sinister where we explore the horror in fact and in fiction. So today's topic is going to be on something that um, I've covered on the channel uh, quite a bit at this point, but for those of you who might not be aware, um, R.L. Stein is a children's author and he wrote this really famous series called Goosebumps. You might have heard of it. <laughs> in its original series, uh, Goosebumps spawned for 62 different books. And, um, you know, because of its popularity, there were uh, there's a television series, there are board games, there are different book series, spinoffs, reboots, you name it, it's, it's there. And as Goosebumps went on to sort of excel in popularity and everything, um, between that and like the heightening tension, legal tensions between Scholastic and Parachute Press, who were, um, arguing and disputing over the merchandising rights uh, for the Goosebumps series. With everything going on, you know, some some side projects were canceled, some, some movies didn't happen, and that's what we're going to be talking about today, specifically Goosebumps Lost Media. And before we get into it, as always guys, thank you so much for uh, stopping by and checking out the channel and continually uh, watching the videos and subscribing, and um, I guess I will be talking to you shortly, but um, other than that, I hope you guys are having a great week. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Goosebumps Series 2000 was created to be a successor to the original Goosebumps books, with several of the 25 stories published between 1998 and 2000. The series ended in 2000 when Stein's contract with Scholastic expired. Before the cancellation occurred, a 26th Goosebumps Series 2000 book was in the works. The book was titled The Incredible Shrinking Fifth Grader. While a manuscript for this book was never resurfaced online, the cover art made for it has. Series illustrator Tim Jacobus first revealed the book's existence on March 6, 2017 during an interview in the Youch Films podcast when he was asked what the final Goosebumps cover was that he ever worked on. Three days after the podcast was uploaded to YouTube, Goosebumps Wiki user Goosebumps Art contacted Jacobus about possibly releasing the cover, to which Jacobus obliged, sending him the art soon afterwards. Based on its title, it can be assumed that this book would have been similar to the film The Incredible Shrinking Man. In the same forum post that unveiled the cover art, Goosebumps Wiki user Goosebumps Art theorized that The Incredible Shrinking Fifth Grader may have been released as The Adventures of Shrink Man, a standalone book that R.L. Stein published in the year 2000. This was later evidenced by several similarities between the two stories. Both stories were inspired by The Incredible Shrinking Man. Each book's protagonist is in fifth grade. And also, there is a scene in The Adventures of Shrink Man where the main character is attacked by a white rat, which is similar to what takes place on the unreleased book cover. Goosebumps Art reached out to Stein via Twitter and asked if the cancelled Goosebumps Series 2000 book turned into The Adventures of Shrink Man. Stein confirmed that this theory was in fact true. The incredible shrinking fifth grader may have gone through slight changes before it was released as The Adventures of Shrink Man, but it can be assumed that the plots are essentially the same. Goosebumps Triple Header is a spin-off series to the original Goosebumps series. The books were overseen by a three-headed creature. Each head had its own name, those being Lefty, Righty, and Slim. This was a creation by Tim Jacobus. According to the concept art, Lefty, Righty, and Slim were originally going to have pink skin, wear a red shirt, and have the look of teenage boys with more reptilian faces. It was mentioned in It Came From Jersey that the design was later scrapped because Tim Jacobus thought that the monsters didn't look very scary. Prior to the release of the first Goosebumps triple header book in October of 1997, R.L. Stein suggested that the new anthology series had the potential to be the successor to the Tales to Give You Goosebumps series. Stein had reportedly finished book two in early of September 1997 and began writing a third entry a few weeks later. However, the book was never released, most likely due to R.L. Stein's fallout with Scholastic. 
A third piece of artwork was commissioned again from Jacobus. It shows Lefty, Righty, and Slim riding in a car while wearing sunglasses. However, the illustration never ended up being used for a cover for any promotional material. It's highly likely that the piece was intended to be the cover artwork for the unreleased third book in the series. The actual stories for the planned third novel were never released. During its peak, Goosebumps hosted a number of various writing contests. Some of the winning stories would never be recovered, while others have resurfaced in recent years. In the fall of 1998, Parachute Press and General Mills partnered to host the Goosebumps Brain Juice Terrifying Title Contest. The contest encouraged kids all across the country to submit a scary Goosebumps title, and the winner would have R.L. Stein visit their school to write their story live. The contest received thousands of submissions, and the winner was Brayden G. The 10-year-old aspiring author in Lacona, Iowa, won the contest with his title, Dead Dogs Still Fetch. R.L. Stein visited Braden's school and came up with the story in front of an audience of students. Though the story was written by Stein, it would only stay unpublished and would never be seen in any future Goosebumps book or any spin-off books. In 2022, PointHorror.com worked with the original contest winner, Braden G, to find remnants of the original story. In doing so, a video recording of the original meeting with R.L. Stein surfaced online, detailing the entire session and fully exploring the story, which prior had been lost to time. I will show you some of the clip now. We'll call one kid Braden. All right, then we need a girl's name. Who has... Actually, I'm going to come out here. Dog. What kind of dog is it? Yeah, what kind of dog? A black lab. Okay, Braden and Jessica have a black lab. That's good. How old? Three? Young, huh? Pretty young. That's good. My dog is three. My dog, Nadine, has a very boring life. She sits under the desk, watches me write all day. <laughs> it's not too exciting. Okay, they have a black lab. What's the dog's name? We need a good name for the dog. All right, who has a good name? Let's do somebody in the back row. Yes. Yes. What's the dog's name? You. Yes. Seth. Seth? <laughs> Seth for a dog? <laughs> yeah? All right, Seth. No, the dog's name is Seth. We have a black lad named Seth. All right? All right, now Seth. Seth loves to fetch. And Bray to think, this is a scary story, right? We have to make this story, scary, this story scary. So we need to think of a good scary place for them to be playing fetch. Where do you think? Where should they be playing fetch? In the forest. In the forest. All right, maybe. And can we think of a scarier place in the forest? How about something scarier than a forest, even? Standing up. Yes. Yes. A graveyard. Oh, that's good. Scholastic ran another Goosebumps contest in partnership with Oscar Mayer and promoted through Lunchables. Only this contest promised an exclusive short story by R.L. Stein as a prize. Reportedly, there were two first place winners of the Goosebumps slash Lunchable contest, meaning 2,000 Goosebumps fans may have in their possession a Goosebumps short story not available anywhere else. In the journey of finding a written record of the completed Goosebumps creepstakes story and a means to find the prize Goosebumps story, three more Goosebumps contests were discovered for the very first time, alongside the existence of at least four short stories lost since 1998. Here are three of the recovered. The Haunted Refrigerator by Eric Sargent was one of the thought-to-be-lost Goosebumps stories. The story tells of an old man who accidentally locks his dog in a refrigerator. While trapped, the dog survives by eating the food inside the fridge, but it isn't long before the old man returns to open the fridge once again, causing the dog to lash out in a hunger-fueled rage. 
the dog devours the man, whose spirit is now cursed to haunt the refrigerator for the rest of eternity. The Dolls by Renee Schnabel tells the story of a girl who, in similar fashion to Slappy the Dummy, has sentient dolls. In an effort to rid herself of the horrible dolls, she sells them at a yard sale, then feeling remorse for the people who, unknowingly, will have to suffer the doll's wrath. Contest winner Derek Stein's story titled Game Over is about a boy who receives a video game from a stranger. In the game, the character must play as a dog, getting into dog fights with, well, other dogs. The boy thinks nothing of it and then goes to bed for the night. When he wakes up, he finds himself in an alleyway, his body having completely transformed into a dog. He eventually ends up being captured by a dog catcher and winding up in the pound, where he exclaims, Game over. Give Yourself Goosebumps was a spin-off to the original Goosebumps series that consisted of choose-your-own-adventure game books. The final book fell victim to the lawsuit once again. It was cancelled before being published. Almost nothing is known about it, and not even the title. All we know is that Craig White illustrated the cover, and this illustration has been made public. It depicts three mean-looking penguins on a mountainous, icy landscape, so the book's plot probably has something to do with the Antarctic. Many people don't know, but director Tim Burton was in talks to direct the first ever Goosebumps feature film adaptation. While the exact story or contents of the film are practically non-existent, we do have this interview with R.L. Stein on the matter. We had a movie deal to do a Goosebumps movie, and I can't tell you what year it was exactly, Stein said. It was like at the height of Goosebumps back in 94, 95, around there, and we actually had a deal with Fox to do the movie, and Tim Burton, who was going to be the producer. We had a big meeting, and I thought, oh, that'll be great, Tim Burton and Goosebumps. And we had a nice meeting with him, and we had a great time, and we talked about what we should do. And then, nothing happened. Stein continued, he got involved in some Superman project, which turned out to be Superman Lives starring Nicolas Cage by the way. That also never happened. He was going to do Superman and then we never heard from him again. That was the end of it. I think we were going to do a new story but use some of the elements from before, but we never got that far, you know. It's very strange, I don't know. People couldn't figure out what to do for a long time, or which story to do, and then Goosebumps wasn't as popular as it was back then. Tim Burton, however, was not the only Hollywood hotshot who was in talks to direct a Goosebumps adaptation. In 1992, R.L. Stein debuted Welcome to Dead House, the first ever Goosebumps book. It was massively popular, introducing countless young readers to the horror genre and spawning a series that would sell hundreds of millions of copies around the world. TV quickly pounced on it, with an ongoing series premiering in 1995, but it wasn't until 2015 that it hit the big screen. In the wake of the Goosebumps initial success, George Romero was one of the filmmakers who explored the possibility of a feature film adaptation. That effort seemed to have eventually started moving forward with Tim Burton, but according to Stein, the project was delayed by Burton's aborted Superman project and eventually abandoned altogether. The exact timeline of the production of George Romero's place within this is quite unclear, but Fox at one point placed a Goosebumps movie on their tentative release schedule for Halloween of 1996. It seems unlikely, however, that Burton's film would have used anything substantial from Romero's script. It would have not been uncommon for the studio to commission multiple scripts over the course of a few years. The eventual 2015 Goosebumps film takes a more meta approach, with Jack Black playing R.L. Stein in a town plagued by a host of monsters from his books. Romero's script was a far more straightforward adaptation of Welcome to Dead House. The Stein book is set in a town called Dark Falls, whose inhabitants are secretly the living dead. When the Benson family moves in, young Josh and Amanda discover that a flashlight beam is sufficient to crumble the town's residents into dust. 
Every year, the town must feed on the blood of a new family to sustain their undead existence. Romero retains the basic scenario and all of the major character names, but tweaks the story in revealing ways. In the Stein book, the zombification comes a la Return of the Living Dead because of a mysterious gas that escapes from a local factory. Romero makes the capitalistic origins more emphatic. The town patriarch has in death possessed the town. The state of the living death experienced by the residents stemmed from a supernatural power that the patriarch has now shared with or imposed on the town. Romero reimagines Dark Falls as the ultimate company town, in which the townspeople are wholly reliant on their boss for their continued undead existence, but the scope of their new eternal lives are highly circumscribed, limited entirely to what the patriarch allows. That means remaining within the city limits and feeding him a new family member every year. Unlike the Stein version, the threat here is not that the inhabitants will simply kill them and drain their blood, but that they will be forced to join the town and live according to the requirements of the town. That means a loss of independence, no possibility for self-determination. Meanwhile, there is a growing rift in the town, the children increasingly resentful of their parents but still reluctantly obedient. The disagreement is articulated in terms of the future. Dawes tries to lure Josh into joining them willingly by promising him a bright future, but after Josh has vanquished the patriarch, Dawes's daughter Karen appears along with the other undead children to apologize to him. We saw you as a threat to us, she says, because that's the way our parents saw you. We shouldn't have believed them. George Romero liked to talk about his dead movies as taking stock of and analyzing America every decade or so. This wasn't a sequel to Night, Dawn, or Day, but it was a zombie movie. And this return to zombies, Romero envisions a truly hellish nightmare, being stuck in an awful job with an overbearing boss for all of eternity. In its way, the script seems just as incisive and insightful about 1990s America as its predecessors did about their time, capturing something visceral about the growing demands on workers made by employers and the dangerous precarity lying just underneath the surface of all the apparent prosperity. Goosebumps Gold is a cancelled book series that was intended to follow Goosebumps Series 2000, with a planned launch in October of 2000. However, the series was cancelled early in its production. In an interview, author R.L. Stein stated that none of the Goosebumps Gold books were ever written. As you know, in the late 1990s, Scholastic Inc. and Parachute Press engaged in a lengthy legal dispute over the marketing rights for the Goosebumps franchise. As a result of the legal battle and declining sales, all series in the Goosebumps franchise were cancelled, and R.L. Stein left Scholastic entirely. Early in the year of 2000, it was announced that R.L. Stein would be teaming up with HarperCollins Children's Books to create two new series, Goosebumps Gold and The Nightmare Room. According to reports, HarperCollins was planning on an extensive marketing campaign for Stein's upcoming work. Cover artist Tim Jacobus even promoted the series on his website, going as far as to share some of the art for the series. The series cancellation was never disclosed to the public or cover artist Tim Jacobus. After October of 2000 release date was passed, Jacobus changed the release date on the website to 2001 and late 2001 because he thought that the series was still going to be released, which as we know now, never did. Goosebumps Gold was planned to be a limited series of 12 books, but only three book titles were ever known. The Haunted Mask Lives, Happy Holidays from Dead House, and Slappy New Year. The plot details for all of these books are practically unknown, as the books themselves were never written. A book titled Slappy New Year was released as the 18th book in the Goosebumps Horrorland series, 
but other than the title, the book has nothing to do with the Goosebumps Gold version. Series veteran Tim Jacobus was commissioned to create the art for Goosebumps Gold around six months after he finished his work on Series 2000. Unlike his previous work, the gold covers were created digitally. The artwork for The Haunted Mask Lives was completed on January 12, 2000, and Happy Holidays from Dead House was completed on January 28th. In October of 2018, a listing related to The Haunted Mask Lives surfaced on eBay, showing a mock-up cover for the book, which was signed by Tim Jacobus and R.L. Stein. In December of 2019, the cover along with a mock-up cover for Happy Holidays from Dead House was released on the internet. As with the art, the cover design and logo were created by Tim Jacobus. The covers were created on January 31st of 2000. The cover template somewhat resembles the original series template, with the series logo and title of the book being on the top and bottom respectively, though the aesthetic resembles that of torn up paper rather than slime. The top and bottom of the cover base along with the logo feature different contrasting colors from each other. The covers contain subtle differences from the full available artwork. The Haunted Mask Lives features mist emitting from the Haunted Mask, a flower design added to the collar of the shirt, and Jacobus's signature can be seen in the bottom left. The mist was also added to the cover of Happy Holidays from Dead House, where it can be seen emitting from the door. Goosebumps Live on Stage, Screams in the Night is a short book that was given to viewers of the stage show Goosebumps Live on Stage. It was published in 1998. The book follows four children, Jesse, Josh, Jamie, and Skate. After enjoying a game of basketball, the quartet head home. They are near the Doomsday Bookshop, figuring that they could use a phone inside. As they walk in, they see an animatronic gorilla transform into an old man. The old man introduces himself as Mr. Gander. He tells the kids that, even though he is old, he still has the heart of a young person, and he pulls out a box and opens it to reveal a mummified heart. Mr. Ganders then hands Josh a phone, and he calls his dad, but he doesn't pick up the phone. Josh then leaves a message explaining where they are staying. Jesse then picks up a leather-bound special edition Goosebumps book and asks to look at it. Mr. Gander tells Jesse that she can't look inside the book. The special edition Goosebumps book came with special magic lantern slides, which Mr. Gander will use to tell stories while the kids are waiting for their parents. While copies of the book are relatively easy to find online, perhaps the greatest piece of Goosebumps Lost Media is that there was never a stage recording for Goosebumps Live on Stage. Shirts exist, dolls exist, footage from the show has never been recovered to this day.